Hi there. Uh, for the next couple of minutes, uh, I'd like to talk to you about the differences um, and similarities between histograms and bar charts. This seems to confuse a lot of people, like what's the difference between a histogram and a bar chart? Well, fundamentally, there really isn't a difference. A histogram is just a type of bar chart. Um, so why different names uh, for, for the same thing? Uh, so that statisticians can feel better about themselves. Um, but also really because it, it actually just kind of refers to different kinds of data that we're barring. So, um, and really, so what it boils down to is the difference between discrete and continuous data. Uh, for discrete data, we're going to be doing bar charts. And for continuous data, we're going to be doing uh, histograms. It's the general difference. Um, so a, a quick review. What is discrete data? Um, it's not data that practices discretion. What it means is that it's data that is kind of lumpy, that kind of like chunks together. So for example, um, some data that are discrete are like if we were counting the number of cars that went by, by an intersection, we could count the numbers of Toyotas and Chevys and, and, and Fords. Um, and those are just like discrete things. There were like five of one and two of another. Um, you know, uh, you might want to look at uh, the number of um, boys in your class versus girls in your class. Um, these are, you know, categories that, that kind of lump together. Um, continuous data, on the other hand, um, is like one particular thing. Maybe it's like rainfall, for example. Uh, in, in a particular day or, you know, every day. Uh, and you could have a bunch of different numbers. You could have like 1.03 um, inches of rain, followed by the next day 2.39 inches of rain, um, which makes it a little bit different than uh, raw counts of, of cars. Um, there is maybe a little bit of overlap between these two. Uh, you might have discrete data uh, that you want to treat as continuous because they, they take on a whole bunch of variables. So, for example, if you're looking at the distribution of grades in, um, in your class uh, and you've got 100 students, well, you know, for, you know, for a midterm, uh, your grade is like a 99 or a 98, hopefully. Um, but it's, it's usually not like 97.35. Um, so technically continuous, but you could, you, I mean, technically discrete, but you could think of it as continuous. So, um, so what we'll see is that in general, if your data are discrete, you're going to be, uh, looking at, let's say categorical data, uh, then it's called a bar chart. Um, and we'll do some frequency tables by hand, um, and, uh, and then relative frequency tables, um, as well as the. The, the bar chart versions of that. Uh, for continuous data, the word is histogram. It's still a bar chart, um, but it's a bar about a frequency or a percent of observations that fall within a class and you get to decide that class. Whereas, you know, like Ford is one thing, Toyota is another thing, um, but you can choose to lump your classroom grades as, you know, A's or B's or, you know, A pluses, A minuses or or however you know you want. It's up to you, actually. So let's fill in this table. Um, we just need to count how many of these cars are, are Fords. So there are, clearly, there are two of those. Um, we've got four Chevys there in black font, and we have one Toyota. So that's just a, a, the frequency of our discrete data. Now, what is the relative frequency? That just means what percent of our observations do these things, you know, fall under. So we've got seven cars. So, um, so two out of seven were Fords. So that's twenty-eight point five percent. Four out of seven uh, were Chevys. That's fifty-seven point one percent. And one out of seven, that is 14.3%. So uh, 
we've got our discrete data and we can calculate from their frequencies and relative frequencies. We can put these into a visual format rather than a tabular format. Um, and that's what we see uh, here in these two graphs. Uh, for the one on the left, uh, that just reports our um, same old frequencies. So we've got, uh, we've got four Chevys, two Fords, and a Toyota. So that's our frequency bar chart. Um, and we can also report relative frequencies, the 57.1%, that was four out of seven. Um, and then Toyota, we had our 14.3%, which was our one out of seven, and so forth. So this is just a visual way of representing the table. Um, one thing that's, uh, that's very common in bar charts is that there's a, there's a gap between our categories, right? So we see this like vertical space right there. Um, and the reason for that is that it's not like this is a spectrum of carness or Toyotaness. Um, it's not like Ford is halfway between Chevy and Toyota. Um, these are different things, and so they get completely independent and different bar charts. Um, that'll be a little bit different with histograms. Um, I, I just wanted to show you here that bar charts sometimes are put uh, sideways. Um, and this has got pros and cons to this. In the previous slide, it's real easy to tell the, uh, the number. Even if I didn't have uh, a little label on top of, top of each bar, it's kind of easy to just, it's natural to look to the left and read off the value. It's a little bit less natural to, to look down to, to look at the uh, the value. I do like um, where you, you can put the actual value here right by the bar. It makes it easier for your reader not having to, to look up and look down and kind of figure out where that bar it, you know is. Um, the, the other thing I really like about um, this graph though when they're sideways is that your reader is just not tempted to think of this as a time series. So the really uh, hasty reader of your data would look at this, this thing and maybe just think, oh, there's a downward trend. And there's no trend here. Nothing's changing over time. Uh, it's not like Toyota came after Ford, which came after Chevy. Um, that's just the arbitrary order that we graphed these in. So um, you really, you know, if you don't want your reader to to fall into this trap of thinking in terms of trend, um, then the horizontal bar chart uh, is an easy way to do that. Okay, now here we've got some continuous data. Um, if you look at that, the, the numbers range from 30 to 35.999. There's decimals all over the place. Uh, in fact, there are no two numbers that have the same value. Um, so each n observation is unique there. It's not like there were three Toyotas or something or three 35.99s. There was only one of those. There was only one of everything. So, um, so we can't really do a bar chart, um, in any meaningful way, unless we decide to group our data together. Now, how we group it, that's up to us. Um, in this case, I think, um, well, I'm leading you towards the idea that um, we should lump the 30s together with the 32s and the 33s together, the 34s together, and the 35s together. So, um, so really what I'm suggesting is we think of these as 30s, 31s, 32s, 33s, and so forth. Uh, and once we do that, once we establish the width of a bin, then we're off and running just like we had with bar charts. We just got to count frequencies. So how many 30s do we have? Um, we've got, let's see here, one, two, three, four of those. We have no 31s. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six 32s. Two thirty threes, two thirty fours, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six thirty fives. So, um, 
It's pretty straightforward. Uh, now my penmanship is horrible, so I'll, uh, I've typed it out. Um, and, uh, and now we can just calculate relative frequencies, again, just like before. Um, we've got 20 observations, so um, the math is pretty straightforward. Um, if, uh, if we have four out of 20 observations, four out of 20, that's, um, that's 20%. It's like one out of 10, zero percent. Uh, six out of 20 is 30 percent. Two out of 20 is 10 percent. 10 percent. And again, six out of 20 is 30 percent. So it's it. Now we're just we need to make bars that are proportional to these frequencies or relative frequencies. And that's what we've got here. Um, it's a bar chart. It's just frequencies and, and, and fractions, just like before. Uh, what are the key differences? Key differences are we decided how lumpy to make our, our you know, our x-axis, uh, who to group together. Um, and uh, likewise, since these data are continuous, that they take on every possible or could take on every possible number from 30 to 35 with three decimal places or what have you, um, then it doesn't make any sense to have big spaces between our bins just by default. Um, it's okay to have uh, a space here because there were no observations in this bin, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put uh, a gap between, um, between bars uh, just by default like we did before with, with our discrete data. Um, because here we need to reemphasize the continuity of the data set by looking at the continuity of the uh, the histogram itself. So um, so there you've got it. That's the uh, that's the difference between bar charts and histograms. They're really the same thing, just ones for discrete data, ones for continuous data. So um, thanks for listening.